Sir, is the screen is visible? Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Today we are going to see the HP ACD to ventilation and active machine plus the electrical equipment part. And uh, why we are uh, having this easy PC? For this, uh, we have uh, taken a slide from Bureau of Energy Efficiency. 2017, they have given one uh, presentation. From there, we have taken by following the ECPC, we will get like 25 to 15, 50% 50 of the energy savings. It is a proven record. We have record also from the Telangana. 
they have uh, already tried out many buildings and we have uh, just 1 to 2% of energy like 1 to 2% of the extra amount we are going to invest and within 2 uh, to 3 years we will be getting the amount which is invested extra uh, during the design and uh, construction stage we will be getting back and as per be like uh, we are going to uh, as per uh, net zero commitment this is a first step for the net zero we will be reducing from 25 to 50% of energy what we are currently using thereby the greenhouse emission the carbon dioxide emission will also get reduced and uh, we will be uh, getting the equivalent monetary savings also is the uh, slide is visible sir yes sir okay yes, sir and for the hvc equipment there are many equipment sir like window ac split ac that usually we have in our offices and even ducted split also is there it will be uh, like uh, two to three rooms they will be uh, having one ac which is uh, serving three rooms or two rooms it is mostly having in uh, like a big offices and packaged ac it is uh, it will serve for one entire floor itself it is uh, like a 10 10 ton and 15 ton 25 ton 20 ton like about uh, 10 and uh, above only we are having package units and we are as we know for single residence or single office we will be using window ac or split ac in case of multiple office in single floor we may have the uh, single outdoor unit or three outdoor units which is or two outdoor units which is coupled to each other and serving to the entire floor maybe the entire floor may we have 10 or 20 offices each office will be having different different acs like uh, one ton two ton maybe split or uh, window ac which can be connected to the single outdoor unit which is placed on the roof usually due to heavy weight and fan coil unit is there this is a chilled water unit there is two type of unit one is uh, like a refrigerant type that usually we have and fan coil unit this is a refrigerant type this is a chilled water type where the water chilled water it is coming from the chiller and it will run through the pipes these are the pipes where it uh, the the air it will come from the atmosphere not at atm- this atmosphere or the room return air it will come and it will it will fall on the cooling water which is uh, circling here there and we will get the cooling air outside and air ca- air handling unit is the bigger version of the fan coil unit that's it maybe the air ca- air, air, air handling unit will be 10 ton 50 ton 15 ton maybe 50 ton also be yeah in our, uh, our big big offices it will serve to the entire building also and maybe three floors four floors even 10 floor building we can have uh, two a choose for first to five floors and other five floors we can have uh, two a choose is enough and uh, crack unit is a computer room air conditioning unit it is used in data centers and the server rooms where it will be uh, installed it is a compact one and uh, the uh, how it is working we can see later and two types of chiller this is air cooled and this is water cooled chiller this is cooling tower and usually the acs we have uh, only for thermal comfort as per ashray 55 we should uh, we should have thermal comfort then only the productivity will be more these are the few examples as per the ashray we have taken the cloth thing how it should be and humidity how, how it should be uh, 40 to 60 percent means the uh, humidity is okay it is comfortable if it is uh, 10 to 30 too dry and too moist and if you are having outdoor in, uh, like a ventilation by opening the gla- like windows with a fan it will be uh, more comfortable 
when compared to closed environment only if you are having a fan with the closed environment there there won't be a, there will be accumulation of our uh, carbon uh, emissions only so it will be less productivity and this is a metabolic rate metabolic rate usually uh, for different type of works we do the metabolic rate will differ and uh, as i said uh, wear of unit it is both uh, like uh, variable refrigerant flow or variable refrigerant volume both we can see different uh, manufacturer they will name differently but as i said uh, one outdoor unit will be serving to different indoor units it may be one uh, one floor in that one floor this is one office two office three office and both office like both uh, like uh, the four offices are served with single uh, outdoor unit and this is a package unit package unit in the sense the uh, we are seeing in the normal offices the outdoor unit will be like uh, installed outside the office and the indoor unit will be there the package unit both indoor and outdoor both units will be inside one packaged casement that is why we are calling as package unit cooling coil compressor condenser and expansion valve controllers everything will be there inside one uh, envelope this is fhu fhu means like uh, fresh air anyway we need uh, we are going to close the uh, in all it buildings we can see it is a closed one so we cannot open the uh, even the windows or doors also due to closed environment there we should, we should we will suffocate so we need at least fresh air depending upon the persons how many persons estimated persons we will take up and we will put in a heat load calculation uh, from there we will get the fa like a fresh air how much fresh air we have to supply so with this we will calculate this is to remove the contaminants from the uh, indoor which is released by us or the machines it it will emit anyway heat but we will emit carbon dioxide by taking the oxygen so it is removed and it will be sent to back to the environment this is cooling tower there are two types of cooling tower induced and forced uh, draft these are the difference between uh, air cooled and water cooled uh, air cooled will be less cost but uh, this one will be high cost but the efficiency will be water cooled is very good for when compared to air cooled this i said uh, uh, computer room air conditioning this is the server room entire server room this is connected uh, this is indoor unit this is air uh, you have seen this one is connected to the outdoor unit through refrigerant pipes and it will be uh, providing the uh, like cooling to the this is the uh, racks data center which is where we have uh, different different servers where it, it will go and it will cool the racks and the outdoor and the return air will be taken back to the unit where it will cool once again through the refrigerant and it will send to back to the uh, room itself these we have some norms also it should be followed with the ventilation uh, as straight to the uh, 2010 standard 62.1 and air filtration the air filtration in the sense the filters which is used in the crack unit because the air it is supplying it will it will be returned back to the return side but it will take some contaminants so there some filters will be there so it will filter the contaminants then it will allow only the the air to pass through otherwise the machine will get affected the blower will get affected where we are going to see the ecpc it contains mandatory and prescriptive uh, types 
லைக் மேண்டேட்ரி இஸ் மேண்டேட்ரி வெதர் எமி பில்டிங் வெதர் இட் இஸ் ஈஸி பிசி சூப்பர் ஈஸி பிசி ஆர் இசி பிசி பிளஸ் வி ஹாவ் டு ஃபாலோ தி மேண்டேட்ரி திங் and prescriptive and whole building approach both are different that i will uh, explain later anyway we need uh, after covid we are uh, many people are talking about the ventilation ventilation is uh, required always but after covid only we came to know the ventilation is the much required there are three types of ventilation uh, natural ventilation through the fan plus the window uh, via window we are getting this is the window and here also one window this is cross ventilation where we are get if we are having any walls here and here and with in this walls we are going to have the uh, the ventilation the windows the air will pass through here and then it will exit from here to here there we will install natural ventilation or mixed mode ventilation where mixed mode ventilation we will be having fan also the rated fan even we are having a ceiling fan older types also in our offices but we should have at least three star rated fans in cases we are seeing uh, the pe has day as given uh, three star four star five star now same thing is applicable to the fans also we are getting in the markets we should uh, purchase and we should install after one year we will come to know how much energy it was it is saving so it is recommended uh, in the natural ventilation part both the windows should be there plus b3 star rated fans minimum we should install these are the guidelines it is provided in the ecbc and if we are having fans also how many fans we need how much area we should it will uh, like it will uh, sufficient to provide uh, the air circulation that we should know if we are having this one this is a room consider the room width like the room width is consider this is meters consider 8 meter and the length is 4 meter we should have at least like 1200 swipe distance this is the swipe outer to outer this is a swipe and we should have at least two fans for that area the number 2 represents number of fans and this is the swipe uh, 1200 mm is the 1.2 meter it uh, represents speed distance from here to here the opposite ends this is the distance at least we should have two fans with equal distance and this is for 7 meter length and 11 meter width there we are going to install like 1500 swipe distance with four fans this uh, data is taken from the national building code 2016 volume 2 part a section 1 there uh, this is a reference we can refer and from there only we have taken and we have placed here and uh, in the ventilation as i told natural ventilation natural ventilation in the sense through windows plus fans and this is mechanical ventilation this mechanical ventilation also follows from the nbc 2006 only as per nbc 2016 we have taken where, where the ventilation is provided with fhus fhu will provide the cooling uh, plus the it will uh, suck the co2 emissions to us provided you know provided by us and uh, other uh, parameters it will be taken back and it will be excreted to the environment and the fhu will provide the good uh, amount of air as per the requirement this is the formula air changes per hour 60 is a constant q volumetric flow of air in cubic per meter where we have one room this q how it is calculated we have to measure the length width and height i consider it a cube it is a room which is like a cube 
we have to consider there how many persons are there that also we should take an into account as per that uh, calculation we should put the inputs into the heat load calculation there we will get how much amount of air it should be supplied to have minimum amount of cooling like 24 to 27 degree how much we need we have to put the details also inside we will come to know how much air flow we need to provide through the edge but air changes per hour that we will calculate through the Q, we have uh, I have taken that, and this one length width and uh, this from the drawing we will be arriving it. This air changes per hour through the formula is after substituting Q and volume we will get the air changes per hour. Maybe six air changes per hour or ten depending upon the uh, area plus the amount of amount of air which is giving inside uh, to the room. As per the heat, it is ingress, uh, the heat it will enter plus the um, uh, person seat there in, inside the home. This is the, uh, like a basement car park ventilation. There also um, carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide emissions are there. So we should install at least for the car, sp uh, car spaces above 600 square meter, approximately 6,700 square feet area, we should install CO2, uh, CO sensors. It's there uh, in the intra, like uh, CO sensor we have to install. And uh, through the CO sensor, we will get the signal. Once the signal we get, the exhaust fan will uh, work and it will exhaust the CO, like a CO2 emissions outside to the environment. The underground car park with natural ventilation, a yeah, minimum ventilation rate of six air changes per hour. It should be having six air changes per hour. Here we have to install six. We have to put six. And Q, the, Q is the total uh, air flow. How much air flow? This A is the area in square meter and h is the height and this is demand control ventilation where we need demand control ventilation if the outside air what we are getting the fh it will suck from the outside and it will cool the air and it will pressurize the air to the inside if the outside air is above 1500 liters per second or the space means uh, the space the room space it is above 570 or square feet or 50 square meter square if it is above or the occupant density 40 people per thousand square meter a thousand uh, square feet if it per uh, square feet like 25 square feet to one person Consider these are the criteria. If any one is it is meeting the room or outer air or the occupant density, we should install the demand control ventilation. The demand control ventilation it will be supplied as per the amount of persons or area. The amount of persons is more, so it is giving the fresh air. Fresh air in the sense outdoor air. So it is differing 40 percent. Here, see, uh, two persons, so 20 percent. Here, total of 10 members are there, so 100 percent of the air is fresh air. 100 percent of the fresh air it is giving, and it is taken back the 100 percent of the air, and it will be thrown out. Here, we can see 80 percent is recirculated, and remaining 10 percent is coming out. And there are the exceptions. The classroom in schools, call centers, like businesses, there we should not have this one. And in the this uh, processes area, where vapors, gases, fumes, there we should not use this one. Otherwise, the, it will suck the, the machine, AC machine will suck these kind of things and the machine get, will get affected.
only it is applicable to the area where it is uh, the occupants are there not for the machineries like ic machine uh, inter- internal combustion machines food areas there we should not use this one and uh, mainly the chillers we are uh, going to see you now if the chiller uh, kilowatt is 530 so we can use air cooled chiller if it is the kilowatt is more than kilowatt in the sense there are two type of things tonnage or kilowatt one ton is like 3.5 kilowatt is one ton if you are divided by this one we need to calculate in tonnage means divided by tonnage equal to 530 kilowatt divided by 3.5 so approximately we will get like 150 uh, 150 tons if it is above 150 tons the air cooled chiller it should be restricted to 33% of the total chilled chilled water capacity it seems like uh, we should be having 33% of the air cooled chiller and remaining it should be chilled water uh, type air cooled water cooled chiller but in chennai there is a mandate like uh, there is a water shortage so we should go for only air cooled chiller otherwise we should be using the treated water then we can use for the chiller due to water shortage and these are the uh, terms tonnage of refrigerant what is meant by ton of refrigerant tr we are used usually we will buy from the shops tonnage one ton two ton jc the amount of cooling obtained by 1 ton of ice melting in one day uh, this is just a description and we should we will be seeing these two terms coefficient of performance coefficient of performance should be higher then only the ac will be uh, the ac efficiency will be higher chiller efficiency is calculated based on the iplv value iplv value is the average eer energy efficiency ratio at different percentage the chiller uh, it won't be like running almost 100% it will be running uh, from 25 to 100% depending upon the usage so this is the energy efficiency ratio at 100% a just we, we will consider and b we will consider c we will consider d we will consider this uh, the chiller will run 100% means efficient during uh, 1% of time only in a day it, it will be uh, it will be used 75% of its of its load only for 42% and it will be functioning 50% of its like uh, efficiency for 45% of the time and 25% to uh, 12% of its time so we are calculating iplv 0.01 like 1 divided by 100 in a and 0.42 that is 42% divided by 100 into b this is a formula and 45 divided by 100 0.45 into c and 12.0.12 into d this is 0. Point, uh, this a b c values are given in the like a uh, machine tag will be there even if we are buying any chiller there will be a tag name plate from there we are taking these details a and b c and d where we are calculating the iplv this calculation is used for the selection of chillers whether we can go for this chiller whether it is efficient or not the higher the iplv it is a efficient one we will see how much iplv should be there this is the minimum energy efficiency requirement as per the ecbc for the water cooled and air cooled chiller if it is the kilowatt refrigerant if this is a tonnage if it is less than 260 then the coefficient of performance should be 4.7 and 
and IPLV should be 5.8. In case of ECBC plus, it is superior than the ECBC. There we should have 5.2 and 6.9. If it is super ECBC, it will be more than the ECBC and the ECBC. The higher the, the COP or IPLV, the efficiency will be good. If it is increasing from the kilowatt also, the respective COP and IPLV will be increased. Uh, when compared to 260 ECBC and super ECBC, there is a slight increment, 4.7 to 5.8, 5.8 to 7.1. If the chiller capacity also increased, then the CPL, uh, CPO, uh, COP and IPLV values also, it will be increasing. Likewise, for uh, this, is, this will be taken for account for while selecting the chillers. We should give these details to the manufacturer while selecting the equipment. These details, if it is this calculation 260 uh, kW or 1580 kW, these are taken from the uh, how we know this much chiller we need for this building means we have to get all the load details like uh, what are the details we are having light it will emit heat and fan will emit approximate heat and how many occupants are there that and all things we need we should know and how many rooms are there how much area height everything we should take into account that details we should put into the heat load calculation from there we will come to know how much kilowatt or tonnage of chiller we need we require to cool the area, the entire area. From there only we were considering these things. And if we are going for air cool ch chiller, likewise for COP and IPLV, it is different. We should, uh, like a 260 kilowatt chiller, we should opt for 2.8 and 3.5. These things we should uh, request the manufacturer or supplier to you approximately uh, like uh, we should uh, demand them for the uh, data sheets for the same then upon data sheets we should submit to the contractor like a consultant for the approval process and uh, this is for normal uh, uh, as far we seen uh, chillers this is for uh, unitary unitary in the sense normal wall uh, mounted units a normal uh, wall units plus the split unit and the package unit. It is greater than 10 kilowatt. 10 kilowatt divided by 3.5 approximately it will come 3 ton, 2.5 ton like that. For ECBC building, if the cooling capacity is less than or equal to 10.5, the water cooled like uh, units are not applicable. In case of air cooled, it should be having minimum of BE three star rated fan, three star rated unit. If it is above ten point five, minimum of three uh, three point three year, we should demand from the supplier. And the air cooled unit, uh, it will be like a two point eight energy efficiency ratio. These are the things we should remember. If it is uh, for uh, ECBC plus. The same thing will be, but it will be higher. The ECBC it is shown, B3 star is uh, okay. And for ECBC plus, B4 star is required. In case of super ECBC, little bit higher, B5 star rated. So as per the tonnage also, as per the capacity, cooling capacity also, it will differ. If we can say, we can see, like 10.5, if it is above 10.5. Be three star rated, it, it must be having a year less than 2.8 only. If you are uh, comparing this one and this one, three star rated, four star rated, five star rated, above 10.5 also, 2.5, 3.2, and it is increasing little bit, a little bit. So 3.4. If you are uh, having a high year, then the efficiency will be higher. The power consumption will be lesser. 
this is the uh, minimum requirement for variable refrigerant flow this is as per the as the ahra standard 1230 this is the standard for manufacturing we should uh, be ma'am we should uh, remember this standard this is for manufacturing the equipments in order to achieve the energy efficiency this is also same like chillers it won't run in the full time full time it will run only for the 2% of its units operating hours if we are answering like uh, 24 hours in that 2% only 25, continuously if it is running 24 hours in that only 2% of the time it will be running 100% remaining 75% remaining 61.7% uh, of the time it will be running like a very less only from here we can uh, under 0. Point, like 23.8% of the time it will be running and 12.5% of the time it will be running in the d part so this is the integrated energy efficiency ratio these are the terms which is uh, which we can see in the machine tag of the equipments what we are buying so these things will be there in the machine tag this is the multiplication like a will be 0.02 like 100% running at the efficiency of 11%, 11 and plus 61.7% uh, of the time it is running at the efficiency of 13.9 this is 23.8% 23.8% of the time and 19 uh, and 12.5 percent of the time indeed the whole uh, 24 hours it will be uh, running with the efficiency of 19.1 percent and there are uh, different types of boilers are there here we are discussing about oil or gas fired for both the boilers will be will be using for hot water purpose only the minimum of energy efficiency it should be like 80 percent there is a term called fua the fua is just what we are giving input to that what we are getting at least we should get 80 percent of the energy what we are supplying it should be the electricity what we are supplying the heat what we are getting it should be at least 80 percent this is a time clock where uh, we are going to install this one in the universities or training institute in all sizes in every sizes of the training institute or universities we, are, we should install these kind of things time clocks plus in shopping complexes with built up area above 20000 square meter there we are installing these things the purpose of this uh, time clock is it is start or stop the system under different schedules for at least three different day types per week and it will be retaining all the time the program what we are giving it will be uh, retaining the thing for at least 10 hours even during the it will run uh, with the help of inverter so it will be uh, we what we are programming it will be uh for the next 10 hours it will retain the same thing and even manual override is also possible for up to 2 hours even if you are programming with the manual override like uh, we can uh, change the settings through this for up to maximum of 2 hours only we can change this is occupancy uh, sensor based upon the persons how much uh, persons are there our uh, the air flow it will differ if there are uh, more persons 
the supply of air will be more. Here we can see the arrows, five arrows, six arrows. If the percent is very less, the air like these arrows are determining like uh, showing the air flow. If their persons are very less, the air flow will be less. Here, this is ventilation. Ventilation means it will extract the air from the room until it will send to the atmosphere. If there are more persons, the extraction will be more. If there is less person, depending upon the persons, the amount of extraction will be more and the amount of uh, input also more. Here, these arrows, like a blue... And these uh, arrows, uh, red color arrows are extractions. Where we are this, uh, where we are installing this one in guest rooms, in the resort or star hotels, uh, as per the ECDC, and in public toilets, in the star hotels or businesses above 20,000 square, uh, square meter, or conference rooms or meeting rooms in star hotel, room size greater than 30 square meter in educational buildings. These are the rooms where we need to install occupancy controls. Uh, occupancy controls. These occupancy controls will function depending upon the persons occupying the room. If it, if it is less, the airflow will be less. If it is more, the airflow will be more. And this is the cooling tower. And this is the variable speed drive. The variable speed drive will, uh, the amount of uh, the water, the fan speed, it will be adjusting the fan speed with the variable speed drive. The temperature, return temperature is higher. Then the fan speed will be more. The fan will speed, the fan will uh, run uh, fast. If the return at temperature, uh, return water temperature will be less, the fan speed will be less. It is uh, uh, installed, it should be installed in 20,000 square meter or above the yeah, built up area buildings only. If it is less, no need to install the cooling towers. We can go for the air cooled chillers itself. This is for water cooled chillers. We need for water cooled chillers, we need at least uh, cooling towers. From the cooling towers only, we are getting the waters, so the water will be pumped to the uh, water cool chillers. From water cool chillers, it is going to the units, FA fan gallery units or air gallery units. This is uh, automatic dampers where fan shutdown or spaces served not in use. The automatic dampers, what it will do if the fan. Uh, if the fan is off, the automatically the damp is also off. If the fan is on, the automatic the damp will be open. This is outdoor air. It is filter, so it will filter the uh, the particulates from the air and it will go to fan. From that fan, it will be distributed to this is rooms. So consider this one room one, room two, room three. This is damper. It is a uh, uh, fixed in the duct. So if it is um, uh, the fan speed, if it is less, this uh, room is less. This is not occupied. So the damper automatically it will close. Or it will, uh, if there is occupancy is there, it will automatically it will open. These are the piping and ducting uh, duct works that are uh, required for the ECBC. As per the norms, we need this one. If the pipe size is less than 40, for the cooling system, for the refrigerant piping, uh, hot water, there we should have insulation. This is insulation is just in a copper pipe, what, what we are seeing black color, like pipe insulation, that is the same insulation. The R value should be more than 0 0.9. And this is for pipe size greater than or equal to 40, 1.2. For ECBC plus, when compared to ECBC and ECBC plus, super ECBC is more stringent. So 0 0.9 means here 1.2. And it is more 
then 1.2 so 1.5 for cooling system 0.4 and for uh, ecbc plus 0.5 and ecbc super ecbc 0.7 it will be little bit little bit it will be increasing order this is for the chilled water type units and this is for the air cooled type units what we are installing our uh, offices like split ac and uh, window ac where we are using this kind of uh, insulations there we should have at least 0.4 meter square kelvin divided by watt this is the insula this is the formula for r value that is insulation resistance value and this is the like a duct work duct work we can see in the malls or uh, uh, big big it companies there we will be having the ahu so the ahu will uh, push the air from the motor or blow motor to the blower it is uh, both are coupled through blower it will be uh, throwing the air it will be distributed to all the you uh, occup occupants to all the flows so for that also we need insulation this is the insulation this is the duct duct is just a like a sheet it will be bended in all sides above that one insulation is there if without insulation the air is cool inside the um, atmosphere our, our room temperature is more if it is uh, coming uh, through the from the motor it is coming from the ahu it is connected to the duct and it is coming and uh, it will thrown out to the uh, rooms without insulation the hot air it is there outside and inside it is cool so uh, ultimately there will be a temperature difference so the droplets will be arising and it will flow it will uh, come down on the floor and it will destroy everything so that we need insulation the insulation should be at least 1.4 this is a unit and for the exterior outside which is exposed to hot sun if it is unconditioned space there we should have 0.4 if it is buried one at least we need we should have 0.6 these are the values for the insulation uh, how much resistance it should have depending upon the areas this is uh, the air balancing and hydraulic system balancing why even though if we are installing the acs whether the ac is performing good amount or not if we are designing this much of air we need for this room whether it is providing that much of air or not that we should know only through the air balancing only we will come to know if you are designing this much air we need for this room but next room in same uh, same room with less occupant so depending upon the occupant we need less amount of like here in this room first room we have four occupants and the second room we have two occupants so here we need uh, like uh, 100 means there we need uh, like 50 only but usually we will install same capacity only like a same capacity ducts only so the air flow will be like here uh, 75 there 75 so we should adjust the damper which is it will close little bit then we will get amount of air what we required as per the drawing if we require 100 here we should open fully there we need 50 we should close partially like 50% then only we will get exact uh, amount of air as per the drawing we will get likewise for the chilled water also we should adjust the chilled water then only through the pumps we will adjust there the, we have frequency drive pumps as per the frequency we will adjust the speed of the pump also it will reduce so we will get minimum amount of water as per the our requirement if we, if we need more then we will increase the frequency 
the speed of the pump will be more then we will get the water flow more when compared to uh, the earlier one and these are the condensers condensers is the outdoor unit this is the outdoor unit it will emit hot air so these units if we have in a roof two or uh, more it should be given uh, necessary clearance like 4 feet 450 in the sense one meter this left side and right side and in between uh, in between two condensers we should have at least 1 meter then only the cross cross flow from this machine to this machine it will uh, affect this machine and from this machine to this machine it will affect so we should at least have one one meter of clearance will be there we should be having otherwise the sharp uh, short circuit will happen from this it will emit heat and it will uh, the other unit which is nearby to this unit will suck the hot air even though it is it is emitting but this unit will be affected so we need at least 1 meter clearance this is a solar water heater heating this in any uh, whether these things will be used in the hospitality and healthcare in all climatic zone except climate uh, cold climate like uti and kodaikanal the 20% of the total hot water design if the uh, graded area above graded area is built up area if we have more than 20000 square feet square meter of the area that square on 20000 square meter of the area at least we should uh, for uh, example we need 100 liters of hot water means 20 liters of the hot water you should be supplied from the solar solar water heater in case of uh, buildings more than or equal to 20000 square meter then 40% of the hot water we should be supplied from the solar water heater it should be following the standards minimum energy efficiency of international standard 113129 part 1 and 2 and these are the gas instantaneous water heater and electric water heater gas instantaneous water heater there uh, we should follow is 1558 with above 80% fuel utilization efficiency fuel utilization efficiency is the amount of energy we are getting from the amount of energy we are supplying that's it and for electric water heater you should follow is 2082 and other watering water heating systems also there this is the room consider this is the room this is the cooling tower as i said from the cooling tower we will be getting the cold water through pump it will be given to the condenser and through the evaporator it will the evaporator will be having water like the evaporator will be having air from the hot air from the room it will be go and it will come here there heat will exchange the hot air will become cool with the water cool water from the condenser it will get the exchange the hot air will get uh, will be cooler will become cooler and the chilled water will become hot water the hot water will go and it will be at least for the other purpose of the building and uh, in many uh, like uh, like rest uh, like uh, resorts there we have swimming pools so the swimming pools uh, due to uh, hot sun it will get evaporate so there we should use vapor retardant pool covers it is a motorized one the pools heated to more than 32% shall have pool cover with minimum insulation value of 4.1 the pool cover also you should have resistance value of 
if the temperature of the sun is more than 32 degrees celsius in case of and if the uh, the fans what we are used to inside the ahus or any ac units if the fan capacity is more than 0.37 kilowatt motor power then we should be have a, we should uh, install the motor we should be a ie2 with 60% of uh, energy efficiency if it is more than if it is more than uh, more than 60 then it is good if it is less than 80 we should go for i as per the ie2 it will give uh, it will give 60% of energy efficiency if we are going from ecvc to ecvc plus then we should opt for ie3 motors 65% if we are going for super ECBC buildings, then we should go for 70% uh, efficiency. Then IE4 motor we should opt for. This is a prescriptive uh, requirement. Previously we have seen uh, mandatory requirement and this is a prescriptive requirement where we should have ECBC chillers as per the standards means COP and uh, IPLV as we seen earlier. But for ECBC plus buildings, we should have star rating of minimum three star rated. And for uh, super ECBC buildings, we should have minimum of five star rated. And this is, this is for bilas. Bilas is used for hot water. So, two types of wireless are there, gas-fired or oil-fired. Both the uh, gas and oil-fired wireless of any capacity, we should be having of a minimum of 85% of energy fuel utilization factor. And for unitary split and package units, B star labeling, if we have any uh, units, AC units we are having, then we should go for B star rated units. Otherwise, we can also go for this. Unit three means wall mounted, like a window AC and split AC and package unit. If it is less than 10.5 kilowatt, we can go for 3.9 EER or more. In the end case of air pool, 3.4. If it is 10.5 or above, then we can go for B five star rated. Okay. The more efficient EER, we will be having more efficient AC also. It will consume less energy and give better performance in terms of cooling, providing the cooling to the rooms. And uh, VAV also we have. If you are having uh, 10 rooms in one, like uh, here, this is one floor consider. The one unit is there. This is the AC unit. But we cannot install each AC unit in each room due to area restrictions are not required. Not required. Maybe this room is not fully occupied. Maybe this one room is occupied. This one room is maybe occupied. So if you are installing four ACs in four rooms, we should have a sufficient like uh, sufficient outdoor units also. The area also we should have. Then only we can install the outdoor units beside the room. Otherwise, we can also have the one single unit. It will be providing the like uh, cooling to entire four rooms where we can control with a thermostat and it is connected to the that is connected to the VAV, variable air volume. The, the volume of air, what we require as per the requirement, we can adjust the amount of air required through the thermostat. In this case, it is fully closed. But in this case, it is not fully closed. It is like a partially open. In this case, fully open. In this case, it is almost like 80% it is open. So depending upon the requirement, if you are switching it off, then the 
then it will go the sensor will go to the vft the vft will instruct the motor to run as per the as per the requirement here we can consider four rooms are there so this 100% it is running if it is one room is off so consider 100% 25 25 25 25 one room, so it will run only 75% of its speed no need to run on the 100% of speed because one room is completely it is off the unit is off so no need to run fully and this is uh, the energy recovery uh, what we are going to install in the super easy busy buildings are low. Sorry. Here we are having diesel generator where we are giving the fuel and it will give the electricity to the buildings. The hot air exists. What it is exists to the environment, what we are going having, one heat recovery unit we will be having. In that heat recovery unit, we are supplying both normal water and the hot exhaust gas. The hot exhaust gas, what it will do, the normal water it is coming, that it both will uh, be uh, in, uh, in contact. So the normal water will become hot water and it will be given to the heating or cooling of uh, requirement of the building. As per the requirement, it will take the hotness from the gas and the water become heat, heated up and it will be given to the building itself. It can be, uh, but uh, these things will be installed in the healthcare or business buildings or hospitality buildings above 20,000 meter square. There only we are having this kind of, uh, there only we need to install these kind of heat recovery units. Other than that, if it is below like uh, 20,000 uh, meter square below built up area, no need to install. There is no mandatory requirement for the installation of heat recovery units. And uh, in the HVAC part, these are the things. If you have any doubts, you can uh, ask. Shall we go for a electrical one? Sir, shall we start the electrical? Yes, sir. Okay. Here we are going to see the transformer voltage drop and transformer losses, diesel generators, UPS motors, and metering and monitoring and renewable energy generation zone. <laughs> As we know, the transformer is just to like uh, step up and step down. So no need to go further in this. There are types of transformers. What we are having in the easy VZ is dry type and oil type. These are the parameter permissible losses for the dry type uh, transformers and the oil type transformers is given in the code, code book. Here we should have 
at the allowable maximum allowable power transformer loss the power transformer what we are having is for easy bc at least we should uh, like we should have three star rated uh, power transformers if it is for easy bc plus we should go up for, for like a four star rated if it is a super easy bc building we should go for five star rated if, if we are going for five star rated uh, the permissible limit are the uh, power transformer losses will get reduced only if we are going for uh, ecbc plus little bit the transformer losses will be they can uh, they can be little bit more when compared to super ecbc plus in case of oil type transformer 5% of voltage loss voltage uh, 5% is uh, allowed in case of uh, 22 22 kV to 33 kV, 7.5 percent is allowed. For the measurement and reporting of transform, uh, transformer losses, we should have a uh, calibrated digital meter of class 5 or better accuracy. For voltage drop, in case of feeders, we should not, it should not be exceeded more than 2 percent. In case of a branch circuit, it should not exceed more than 3% of the design load. It should be 2% or less when, when for the feeders. It should be 3% or less for the branch circuits. For the motors, what we are going to use, for that motors, it should be at least IE2 or higher for ECBC building and IE3 for ECBC plus buildings and IE4 for super ECBC buildings. This is for uh, diesel generator. Diesel generator, it, it should be mandatory only if the building built up area is equal to 20,000 square meter or above. If it is less, then no need to go, go for diesel generator. It is not mandatory. For optionally, we can have, but it is not mandatory. If we are having more than 20,000 square meter, we should have diesel generator. For ECBC, we should, uh, we should have uh, at least three star rated. For ECBC plus, four star rated and super ECBC, five star rated. And we should have a check-in metering and monitoring at the building uh, mains. The monitoring should have at least the energy usage, kilowatt hour, and energy demand, and the total power factor for hourly basis, how much the power factor is, is recording. Check-in metering and monitoring. For building contract demand, if it is 120 kVA to 250 kVA, the HVAC uh, contract for this HVAC comp system and components, there should be a check in metering and monitoring. If it is, uh, if uh, for the lights and the exterior light, uh, lighting, then no, should, no need to be having a check in metering and monitoring. For uh, domestic hot water, also not required. For plug loads, are not required. The submetering. Minimum requirement for separation of electric load. Here, mandatory requirement of submetering. Submetering is required only if uh, it is a shopping complex for facade lighting is separate we need. For the elevators and for the escalators, moving box, there we should have a separate submetering for businesses, for hospitality, and for the, the, for the data centers, and commercial kitchens. There we should have a separate submetering. And in case of power factor, we should uh, we should uh, at least we should maintain 0 0.97 for the ECBC with the capacitor bank according to the sizing we should be done. For the uh, ECBC plus, we should have 0 0.98. For the super ECBC plus, super ECBC. 0 0.99. We should have a minimum of 0 0.97 in case of ECBC. Uh, otherwise, uh, we should install according to the 
this uh, requirement we should install the capacitor bank at, at the site as we said earlier the total power uh, usage in the building distribution loss it should not be like uh, more than 3% this is a distribution site and for feeder site for ecbc 2% earlier we have seen and for ecbc plus 2% and for super ecbc 1% these are the requirements it is given in the ecbc code for ups and un uninterrupted power supply if it is a kd 20 uh, kva if it is less than 90.2 percent of the at the 100 percent full load it should be at least having 90 percent 90.2 percent energy efficiency if it is between 20 to 100 it should have 91.9 if it is more than 100 it should have 93.8 these are the things given in the ecbc book and for uh, renewable energy systems at least we should have uh, 20% 25% of the roof area or 1% of the total peak demand are connected load like uh, we can uh, we should have like a 100 kilowatt connected load if it is a 100 kilowatt then at least 1 kilowatt amount of generation capacity we should have the area allocated to that area allocated to the 1 uh, 1% of the 100 kilowatt uh, here we have we have the code is specific 25% of the roof area but in as per uh, our uh, cmda there uh, they have given mandatory 33% so we should follow 33% only as per uh, our uh, tamil nadu is concerned as per cmda norms but in ecbc book 25% is given but we are more stringent than ecbc this is uh, additional requirement shall be fulfilled by ecbc and super ecbc this is for ecbc and this is for super ecbc for all building types except below like star uh, hotel resorts uh, universities other than this buildings minimum 2% of the total contract demand and for this buildings we should have minimum of 3% of the total contract demand and for all the buildings this is for super easy bc this is for easy easy bc plus and this is for super easy bc as i said earlier easy bc is a minimum bare minimum and easy bc plus is little bit higher than easy bc and super easy bc little bit higher than the easy bc plus so here we have given 4% when compared to easy bc plus 2% here we have given minimum of 4% this is should be installed and uh, these are the documents we, uh, we should be having like uh, the solar panel it will be uh, it will be absorbing uh, radiations from there we are uh, sending that thing to the battery bank where it is stored and to the inverter will be giving to the house where net metering is there it is connected to the grid if it is more uh, generating uh, more than the required it will be given to the grid that's all for it in case of any uh, doubts you can ask me
I will share the presentation in the WhatsApp group. If anyone have any doubt, they can ask.